folks. A recent subscriber of mine said that he'd like to see a full review on the Wagero 2 Plus 2. So I guess he stumbled on my channel because uh, he was interested in that design. Um, I will do my best to give a review, if that's what you want to call it. It's basically my opinions and feelings and comments about the airplane and how it's built and how it's flown. Uh, so first, I'm not a professional pilot, I'm not a professional aircraft builder by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just another private pilot who built a home-built aircraft, and in this case it happens to be the Wagero 2 Plus 2. So to discuss this airplane, let's first start with the drawings and the specifications. So if you buy a set of Wag Air 2 Plus 2 plans from Wag Air Incorporated, this is what you get, about a 2 foot by 3 foot section of paper drawings, and you get a serial number, which mine happens to be 932. And I bought these plans back in 1991 or something like that. So that's how many plans had been sold at that time. So, to me, you know, the review, what, what, can, what can a Wagero 2 Plus 2 do? Well, personally I think it starts with, it starts with the specifications. And the reason I bought this, these plans and decided to build this airplane is because at the time I thought it was going to be a camping, moose hunting, uh, float flying machine for me. Uh, so that's why I picked this design and, and in my mind that's one of the only reasons why anybody in today's world would, would pick this design as well. So if you, look at the, if you look at the specifications, the gross weight is 2,200 pounds. The empty weight's 1,080. So you got a 1,120 pound useful load with this aircraft. If you build it light and you get it to within the specifications. I was hoping to get a thousand pound useful load out of mine but I missed that mark by quite a bit. Um, but I do not have, I did not stick to all the plans from Wagero. I don't have a Lycoming engine and I don't have Wagero 2 plus 2 wings. I a set of wings off what's called a North Star bush plane. It's a Canadian design out of Midland, Ontario. And I think I pay at least a 50 pound weight penalty by using those wings. They're great wings, they're strong. I had an accident with this thing in 2012. I flipped it over on its back. I lost my engine. It went into a cornfield and I ended up upside down. Those wings took hardly, they were hardly damaged at all. I had to re rework uh, the leading edge metal. I had damage to the struts. I had to replace my spinner and propeller, windshield, and I put a small ding in the top of the rudder and I had to rework the rudder. And that's really all, and of course I had to rebuild my engine. Two reasons in my mind to still build this thing. It's, it's one is, it's, its main reason is it's, it's, a, it's designed to be a heavy hauler. You know, 1120 or 1000 pound useful load is pretty significant. Uh, there's lots of twins out there that won't, that won't carry that. So it's a it's it's definitely a uh, it's it's definitely a utility bush kind of airplane. So what else will it do? Well, it says it'll do it'll do 129 miles an hour. Typical cruise speed is 124. Well, again, I don't have the Wagger wings, but my airplane does not cruise at 124 miles an hour. It cruises at about 100 miles an hour. But at the same time. I don't have a Lycoming engine, I don't have an all-metal prop, I do not turn my prop at the same RPM as you would with an air-cooled engine. These air-cooled air engines typically run from 23 to 2500 engine RPM and prop RPM. I'm turning my Mazda engine at 55 or 5600 RPM in cruise, 
which is only 21 and a half inches of manifold pressure. Typically you would run a, an aircraft engine at 75% power, which is 25 inches of manifold pressure. And uh, the reason I do that is because I just don't want to burn so much fuel. It's burned seven and a half gallons an hour and cruises at a hundred miles an hour, give or take. Now, I have, out of curiosity, leveled the nose and brought it to, brought it to uh, 25 inches of manifold pressure and the RPM, the engine, goes up to 6,000. And it'll, it makes an honest 100, 115 to 120 when you do that. So you could potentially approach this number if you're cruising at 75% power. This video will demonstrate what I was talking about, airspeeds. So on level, airspeed's about 100 miles an hour. Manifold pressure 21.5. Fuel burn 7.5 gallons an hour. Okay, so let's open up the throttle, increase the manifold pressure. As you increase the throttle <coughs> and power to the engine, you have to uh, retrim, push the nose down to stop it from climbing. Still working on the trim, adjusting the mixture slightly. Just letting it settle, waiting for it to stabilize. Okay, so we're 25 inches of manifold pressure. We're burning about 11.1 .1 gallons an hour. We're level. And here the CV airspeed is now actually slightly above 120 miles an hour. So it is possible. So the other thing it says it will do is it will uh, 800 feet per minute rate of Lot rate of climb, range of 670 miles, and a service ceiling of 14,800 feet. I cannot attest to any of that uh, other than the rate of climb. I certainly get, I certainly can get an 800 foot, uh, foot per minute rate of climb out of it. Range, I don't know because I've never taken it on any long flights. This video will demonstrate the climb performance for a couple of different airspeeds. So, right here, I'm pointing out that I'm climbing at 90 miles an hour and around 1,000 feet per minute, maybe a little bit more. I'm a wide open throttle and I extend my climb out here, ease the stick back to uh, set the airspeed for 80 miles an hour. And if you're watching the uh, vertical speed indicator, you can see that it's gone up from uh, thousand feet per minute to uh, close to 1200 feet per minute which is which is typical for the conditions so the other thing that's of note you build you build a big table and you build basically the center section of the plane on the flats and then you take that away and then you build up what you see here and you build the bottom on there that's how it's built it is not it is not an easy airplane to build when I built mine I bought it I bought all the pieces piecemeal. I bought this kit. I bought I bought that kit. But when you buy the fuselage kit for this airplane, you get a 20-foot sauna tube 
full of 20 foot pieces of round pipe and you're basically you're cutting and fitting every one of these joints so it's you can call it a fuselage kit if you want but it's a plans built airplane you got to follow these plans and there's a, there's a few mistakes in these plans that you'll find out if you start to build it a couple of errors but they're basically just in the spacing of the bulkheads when you go to put the two when you go to put the two pieces of the airplane together I found the most difficult thing for me was building it was build, building the this this stuff around here for the uh, for the for the nose bowl and everything all I mean they show pictures of it but there's, there's a lot of stuff you got to figure out on your own when it comes time to putting that together back in 1991 or 1992 took me 12 and a half years to get it built and get it flying for the first time a lot of the part of the reason was that I chose a non-standard engine put an automotive engine in it so I had a lot of things to figure out and work out uh, and I put in I put in the Piper trim for the for the elevators which also required extra time and uh, and work the original drawings call for a tiny little tab in the elevators. That's how you're supposed to trim the elevators. Um, but my dad at the time, he was helping me with the fuselage. And he said he'd pay a lot of money for that Piper trim. So he was a Piper man and he was a flight instructor. And he knew what he was talking about and I listened. So I put it in. And yeah, it, it, it did cost some time though, I must admit. But it is a good trim system. If I was to build another airplane for the same reasons today, if I wanted to put an airplane on floats and, uh, and one with a decent load in it, I wouldn't build this. I would be building a Glass Air Sportsman 2 plus 2. They ripped the name off of Wag Arrow. It is a Wag Arrow Sportsman 2 plus 2 and now you've got a Glass Air Sportsman 2 plus 2. How ironic. But anyway. That is the model I would recommend somebody to build if they were going to build one of these, uh, an airplane with similar, similar performance specs. And where the glass air shines is, is it, it just goes faster. It uh, carries the same amount. It's got the same sort of landing speed and uh, performance characteristics, but it's got a, it's got a steel tube structure in the, in, the, in, the, in the cabin frame to protect the pilot and passengers but the rest of it is uh, the rest of the fuselage is made out of composite and the wings I believe are all are metal don't quote me on that but that's the plane I'd be building because it'd be nice to go 150 miles an hour once in a while as opposed to putting along at, at, at 100 all the time you know, you get a headwind at 20 miles an hour, you're down to 80 miles an hour. And you're still going faster than the cars, but not much. Anyway, that's the way it is with airplanes. By the time you get your design picked and started to build it, a better one comes along. There's just no one airplane that'll do everything for you. So, I certainly don't want to sound ungrateful. I love my bird. Climbs out pretty good. You can land it nice and slow and short. It is what it is. I'm going to live with it, and I'm certainly not going to build another airplane. Too much time. That's the that's the main reason. Over and out. <laughs>